Good evening. I'd like to call the all board of selectmen's meeting to order at June 29, 2020, at 6 p.m. If you please all stand for the pledge of allegiance, a moment of silence. And Laura, if you could please lead us tonight. Hi. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Gentlemen, before I ask for approval of the agenda, I'll just read it for the record one more time, as we have for the last two months, two and a half months. Still further notice to keep our members and staff safe and comply with our state 91 8 Restriction on public gatherings. The town of Walt is moving from in person meetings to remote audio participation. To remotely attend the meeting audio only. Visit our website, www.alton.nh.gov, for telephone access and remote access instruction listed on the news announcements on the homepage or telephone the selectman's office at 603-875-2113 or 603-875-229. Between 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. for a dialing code and meeting ID for each selectman's meeting. There continues to be no public input at this time. If you wish to have something read in the record, please call the selectman's office at 603-875-2113 or 603-875-0229. Or email the selectman at selectman at alton.nh.gov. Or mail a letter to the board of selectman at PO Box 659, Alton, New Hampshire, 03809. Your comments, questions, or concerns be read at the next available meeting and answered at that meeting or the next scheduled available meeting. This time, gentlemen, I look for gender approval, but I do have one addition on the new business, the number three, Depot Street Upgrade. I have one on the Linwood Drive. And that way you want to put that as 4A? Yeah, because yeah. you'll have Ken on we'll the line. Well, Kenny on the line. Linwood, right? Yeah. Yeah, I had the same thing. Oh, they call you too? <laughs> That's nice. Somebody else has somebody else's numbers in mind, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, sir. I don't know whether we could briefly speak about a request from back in March by the uh, Old Home Week to establish uh, a Facebook page. How about if you put it underneath your selectman's report? Very good. Okay. <clears throat> Please on for next week. If you want to wait, if not, that's fine. Say that again. The yes. request is on for next Monday night. Oh, fine if you rather wait, but good if enough. not, that's fine. No, that's good enough. Okay. okay, gentlemen, at this time I have two amendments underneath one business, number three, Depot Street Upgrade, and number four, A, Linwood Drive. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? Make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. Second. Motion be made by Mr. McDonald to approve the agenda as amended. Second by Mr. Whitman. Any further discussion? I'll pull the board then. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Rochelle? Yes. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Wentworth? Yes. The vote is in the affirmative. Five. All in favor. So at this time, we'll move on to announcements. Town offices will be closed on Friday, July 3rd, in honor of Independence Day. The fireworks display scheduled for July 4th holiday has been canceled due to the pandemic. Next item will be submission of public comments questions. Dustin Fortier, Stockbridge Corner Road. Complaint. Mm. Folks have it in your agenda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Steve, June 23rd, 2020. Other would be law enforcement. Since I've lived here, since I have lived here since 2012, the amount of traffic is absolutely staggering. I believe at the corner of the fourth of Ellie Road splits with Starfish Corner Road, the speed limit is 30 miles per hour. Most people will do 50 to 60 thinking they're on a highway still. GPS sends anyone from the seacoast going to Concord or vice versa down this road from Cash Road in New Durham. Not only does anyone working to and from these locations fly on this road, but the amount of commercial tr truck like tractor trailers is ridiculous. If you've ever asked yourselves why the asphalt always has to be repaired on the shoulder of the shrinking road, 
look at the size and weight of these commercial trucks that tra travel down the small rural road on a daily basis. Not only is their speed aggravating, but the amount of times I've wake I'm woken up early in the morning by those obnoxious noise of jakes, exhaust brakes, is absolutely unnecessary. There should at least be signage like no through trucks or no exhaust brakes in the neighborhood. You can't say it's much fun trying to pull out of this driveway with the high volume of traffic on this road, especially when they fly around the corner. I have two young girls who are always in the car with me, and to which I always have to constantly tell them, whatever you do, don't go near the road. Also, plowing is an absolute nightmare when I have to sit and wait for a mile of traffic before I can plow my mailbox. More policing in this road would help too. Well, I understand his concerns because all town roads are facing this issue. That one might face a little more because of the which a lot of folks do. And you can see it when you come up Route 11 West out of New York. Unfortunately, the town did try to regulate truck traffic there, but they were in error of being able to regulate it because they received state money, which also includes state money for these roads, and you can't restrict truck limitations unless only town money is used on these roads. As far as the exhaust brakes, that signage could be at. Um, a lot of towns, if you go around New England, have that when you get into villages and in certain districts, exhaust brakes are prohibited. I can understand that. I do can sympathize with them. I live on a dead end road and I have cars that still go by 40 miles an hour and I don't know where they're going so fast because the road goes nowhere. <laughs> right. I have a lot of trucks on my road. Your road coming over from Powder Mill Road, the same thing. Uh, Old New Durham Road. Basically, every town road that leads into another community has that or shortcuts. All we do is police department. We did have law enforcement attached to it and see possibly if we can control those areas heavily too. One what might be suggested is maybe on the GPS system might be recommended that tractor trailers continue their route to the Alton traffic circle and go up 28 south. But there's not really much we can do there except for maybe the signage on the exhaust brake. And same thing also put the uh, radar trailer there. A little bit to help. They are moving the radar machine around. Mm -hmm. I did see it the other night. Matter of fact, they got me. I was one mile over the speed limit. So, um, but I don't know what else you gentlemen might have to add to this. But I agree with uh, what Paul just said because, like I said, it always works for me. You folks want to ask Mr. Roberts possibly, or the town minister asked Mr. Roberts what it would cost to put in two signs that say "Dos breaks." Prohibitive. Do we have any of those in town? No, Mr. Oh, sir. No. But we have to purchase them. We would have to purchase them, and then too, it's just something about Main Street too. Um, I, mean, I had the fortune and experience to listen to exhaust race at two o'clock on Main Street for a month. I have to say, if I, I'm glad I live where I live because I'm not next to a state road, and I don't know how some of these folks live on Main Street at two o'clock in the morning when you hear the truck traffic go through. And that's a state highway. Oh. But not doing 30 miles an hour, I can tell you. Yeah. Oh, no. and, and if you go uh, throughout town, like uh, I live on East Side Drive, same problem there. Yes. Uh, but I kind of, I live with it. I live with it. <laughs> uh, nothing's perfect. Now, the speed, that's, right. that's an area that should be addressed. And I believe we just uh, pass that on to the chief. Uh, let him handle it. That's his job. That's what we've done yep. in the past. It says that the exhaust brakes, there's no ordinance against it. At some point, I think it's something that the board should, should direct because it's not the first time I've heard about exhaust brakes. Are you going to put them up all over town? Well, I'm not saying to, but I'm just saying there should be at least an ordinance against it. Well, there is a noise ordinance, but I don't think no, I don't, there isn't much. It's done about it. It's hard. You need to have a decibel reader. Exactly. Has to be calibrated. You know what is happening. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Well, yep. Exhaust breaks within certain areas, but I mean, there's certain people that live out in the country because they don't want to live next to a busy road. I hear them every day. And 
the town roads such as that, you think you're living out there, and the next thing you know, boom, 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 this young said 2012, he didn't realize it, and I'm sure the traffic has increased. But unfortunately, as Americans, we all seem to want to be in a hurry to go somewhere. And the town's grown. Yeah. And the town has grown. And it's going to continue to grow. All right, so you want to send this down to the police department? Is what you're suggesting, Mr. Holt? Yeah, yes, Mr. Whitman? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yeah. Just need a consensus on Appointments being none, new business. Combination beverage, wine, tobacco license. Jessica McGee and Ariel Wolf, 404 Main Street. And this is at the, as some of us that have lived here a long time know it as Busy Corner, but it's not the Busy Corner store anymore. But or Amy Lynn's. Of May General Store, as known as now. So you saw all the reports. They had no problem with that. Well, they previously had beer, wine, and tobacco sales. Yeah, they, right. they had it before. Norman, I need a motion to approve the request for the combination beverage, wine, and tobacco license. Make a so motion. Oh, go ahead. So moved. Second. Motion has been made to approve. Combination beer, wine, and tobacco license for Justin McGee and Ariel Wolf for, for Main Street. Seconded by Mr. McDonald. Any discussion? I'll pull the board, Mr. Whitman. Yes. Mr. Rochelle. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Whitman. Yes. Twice. Twice. I'm sorry, Mr. Holt. Yes. Mr. Wentworth. Yes. Both in affirmative. 2021 Kohler Merit recommendation. And you hopefully you'll see the town administrator has written it up, and I believe that's why Laura's here with us tonight. Also, I don't know what the two of them put together, along with the town policy about Kohler, when we are supposed to bring it up and talk about it. Could you bring her up to the table and then I'll try? I will as soon as I start talking about it. So, Laura, could you come up and join us at the table? <clears throat> last year, if you remember, except um, we did not approve the COLA last year. We just basically reasoning in here is if we don't do at least a COLA every now and then we will fall behind below the pay scale of what we recommend. But last year we gave three and a half percent. We gave three and a half percent merit. merit. But normally it came, comes in with two percent and they go anywhere from a one percent merit to up to a three percent to five percent merit. We didn't do that last year. We just did a merit across the board. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, Liz and Laura asked me about this because we're going to fall behind our page wage scale uh, if we keep moving forward this way. And um, the department heads are waiting for your decision on this so that they can put in the proper budgeting for the 2021 budget. They're not waiting on our decision yet. Yeah, they ain't got them budgets ready to go. It ain't even August. They're waiting for your decision on this. Well, this is pretty cut and dried, Mr. Chairman. Yes, it's not some bolts. Uh, yeah. And it can be handled right through the finance office, if I'm not mistaken. Well, sir, it has to be approved by the board. It has to be approved by the board. I'm talking about being, once we approve it, being put in budgets. Once we approve it, it can be put in the budget just. It's whether or not the board of selectmen decide that they're going to give a call this year. And as the average goes, I believe it was 1.6%. The average selectman had the right to round up or round down. I believe the recommendation of the town administrative finance officer was. So I am asking the board that tonight is your pleasure to, to do a COLA this year, or are you going to simply stick with just the merit? Or are you going to do COLA and the merit down the road? Mr. Whitman. Please. The possibility of a merit raise at 3.5 percent. I don't think we need to call up. I think raises can be based on merit because if we had a three and a half percent and two percent call up, we're talking a possibility of over five percent raises. Nobody in the private sector is getting that. Just the whole. Uh, I believe it's uh, a two and a two. You best for. Uh, I, the COLA, okay, I have no problem. That's a, uh, across the board, everybody gets it. And that's compounding. But the merit, I, 
I, I like the board to possibly consider, maybe not this year, but next year, instead of doing merits, do what I call a bonus, which is non-compound. In other words, you can do it similar to a merit, a bonus, uh, job performance, each department head makes a recommendation, but it's given only once. It does not compound from year to year, which <clears throat> you see when you <clears throat> pass out these merit raises like we do now, it goes on and it's, if, if somebody's getting $10 an hour and you give them 2% across the board, which is a COLA, <clears throat> that's 2%. Then you give them a 2% merit, that's a 4% raise. So this compounds as time goes on every year. If you gave the same amount of data. No, 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 no. It's, but if you give a, a bonus, that's only for this year. So you're saying your, your bonus would be just a flat lump sum, single paycheck, boom. Whatever way you want to do it. And you well, do it bonus. mid-year or at the end of the year. Well, the bonus is only paid out one time a year. Yeah. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying is that doesn't go on to his or her <coughs> hourly wage for the following year. Just the COLA. Because I I look at two and two. And it did, you know, this merit raise, I I work in municipalities and sometimes it's how do you word it that it's passed out not necessarily for a merit. It, it is, it's, it's pretty hard to determine what a, an employee is worth in a municipality as far as merit goes. Because there's no profit. Nobody has to show a profit. And it's run totally different than a business. But I, I'm just bringing that up to the board for a thought. And and I'd also like to bring up another thing, Mr. Chairman, if I could, is the, uh, it says COLA would be applied to elected official stipends. Uh, we're on some tight times maybe, and uh, I have no problem with uh, elected officials. Not <coughs> I think we should be nice a couple hundred dollar rates. Mr. McGall, we set this up, Bob, so we don't high scale, it kind of keeps everybody in the center. That was the idea of setting up COLA, because we had the STEP program, we took the STEP program out and set up the merit instead of the steps. Because we had the STEP program plus COLA. And we took the STEP program out because that even fell behind, because once they were here, I was 10 years or something, there was no more steps for them. And a lot of the Department heads and a lot of them, a lot of the people in the, that work in the town were falling behind that scale that the state sets. We were losing people because a the, lot. Rate, the oh. pay was so low because they had fallen behind over the years. That's why this was set up this way. And the hiring rate. Yeah. Okay. When I was on this. Then you review, if, if you've got that problem, you review that. That happened in 2016. Well, no. And we had to bring a lot of the people up because, and way up because if we were way, way behind on a lot of these people were getting screwed. And we were losing good help. People that did a great job for us and we had no headaches to where we're retraining people because we were so far behind on the pay scale. That's why we switched it around. I'm going to put my two cents in now. The last three years I sat it before I was reelected this year, I always stated that if I wasn't giving my employees a pay raise in my business, I could not vote respectfully to give town employees a pay raise, but I couldn't afford to give my own pay raise. With this pandemic this year, I've been very fortunate, um, very blessed, if you want to say, and exhausted. We were lucky with this because we were considered essential. My employees did receive a mid-season bonus, first time I've ever been able to do that in 25 years. And they'll 
will still have their regular Christmas bonus at Christmas time, but they'll also get a merit pay, if you want to call it that. They'll be getting a pay raise. They do every year in January based on how I feel they have performed for, the, for this business. Which I think what they bring with the Yeah. So this year, the way I have seen it, this has been the first year I've sat here, and I've tried to have the patients looking at everything. Everything I know that I have asked of the board has asked of the employees of this town, every department, they have come through for us, if not the next day, within the week. They have had the stress that a lot of us have had in the private sector this year with this pandemic. I often talk to them. Last week I stopped the highway department and they're moving the picnic tables that next morning in Harvey Park, Mr. Roberts. Even we carried one or across because I had the height to get over the guardrail. <laughs> um, I watched Fox and Rec. I watched the cemetery do what we've asked them to do for three years. They were right on. They had it done. We talked about the monuments. It was right on. It was right done. We've asked the finance department asked for certain things, and I think tonight you'll find them here. Another letter. It's done. Josh is sat here night after night with us late, which is not really part of his requirement. He has to make sure that the townspeople hear our meetings. The fire department has stepped up. Um, every time there's a call in the police department, they've stepped up. I also look at it. Any one of these employees that we had here said, uh, I don't want to be anywhere near. I don't want to be part of this pandemic. Could have happened with us for Parks and Rec. They could have gotten their unemployment filed for it. They could have gotten that $600 a month the federal government, $600 a week the federal government gave out. But they didn't. They all stuck with us and worked hard. So I'm the biggest one that I don't agree with Cola to begin with. But I believe if you get a pay raise, it should be based on the performance that right. you do for the company you work for or your employer. So I am looking at the you know, swing 1.6%. I don't know if I really want to round the two, but I am looking anywhere up to a three to three and a half percent employees this year because they have done what we asked them to. This is probably the first year I've not had anything come back with a kick in the butt. And it's done quick. It's done quick and it's done right and yep. it's done efficiently. I mean, one, I want to use the highway department again. They have done more road work this year than they have done in the past two years. And they're moving right along. Uh, fire department, same thing. They're doing it. They have donated. You know, they got their trailer down there. They made the roof on it. Things. I mean, a lot of different things are going into my decision this year. But one is, I know what I'm going to give my employees this year. So I have to even... But what these folks have done for me as the chairman of the board of selectmen for this group, I feel I can only I have to honor that too with them. Mm -hmm. So I would not go any more between Kohler and Merit of 5% for myself this year. So it could I can go as high as that, but it might be a 2% Merit or 2.5%. But they have done what we have asked them to do. Um, just even the stress they have, just seeing them out on the road, they talk, they wave, the performance of them, and the gratuity of them for what's being done in this board backing them has really come a long way. I understand the tax that's one of those taxpayers. Yep. We all are. But some, of us, some of us pay more in taxes than others. That doesn't matter, but we're still on taxpayers. We're lucky we got the people we got in the in the so working. Right now, that's, that's my five cents. I will open up the floor to somebody else now. Mr. Chairman, what were your figures again, COLA in there? COLA, when they came out with the 1.6, we can either round up or round down. I know Liz and Laura probably doesn't see the 1% with the 2% instead of 1.6. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Bob, I, I'm reaching right around 4.5% altogether. So leave that all go three. Mm -hmm. Leave that and go three. Leave, leave a 1.6 and go 3% merit? And go three. Yeah. Up to 3% there. Yeah. Not saying everyone yeah. will get the 3.5% there, but this, that falls back on Everybody the gets it. But that you falls back on the cola. 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 And, cola and, and, and three. three on there. So that's four. Four. four, 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 four. Uh, call me an old softy, but I think the chairman has well, eight. spoken truthfully about our town employees have stuck by us when, had they been laid off, they'd be making more money. Some of them would be, yes. Yes. Um, considering the pandemic, and I'd be a hypocrite myself if I didn't see what the chairman is saying. 
I'm getting $300 extra a week as a frontline worker in healthcare. It's only for the pandemic, but I have worked through the pandemic when a lot of people have worked. So, uh, but we 1.6 cola up to 3% merit for this year. I think I could go along. We even had the, the town bond when the supervisor was out with his knees and they stepped right up to the plate. <laughs> Every department has yeah. stepped up. Yep. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Yes, sir. No, oh, I mean, my my thoughts that I expressed earlier as you know, the town employees in this town, I I don't have a problem with at all. I don't think anyone. Well, is my opinion, and I think they should be rewarded, especially this year. Uh, but I just wanted to bring that out. Just think about that that bonus. You you, you might even want to not this year, but you know. We got times coming on. A bonus, you can make it a little bit bigger, larger amount, and you can pass it out a little bit different and really reward some excellent employees more. You know, when you're playing with a four, I mean a three percent, there's not much there. Well, I go along with the one and a half, one point point six, and a three. Merrick. I'll make a motion to that. Well, before you make the motion, I'd just like to ask the two ladies if they, if they have any other input they'd like to put in. They did work on this. Well, I created a staff report to you and um, that you could see the history and understand where the figures came from mm -hmm. and what the current recommendation is on the board right now is a little more than this. So I was trying to Keep the employees in mind, but be reasonable due to the taxpayers. I have nothing further to add. I'd like to thank you all for your comments, suggestions. Okay, thank you. Lori, you have anything? Thank you, no. Okay. No? Mr. Whitman? Okay, I make a motion that uh, this time, uh, particularly considering the pandemic, we'll go 1.6 COLA and up to 3% error. Should be made by Mr. Whitman to approve a 1.6 percent cola along with the three percent merit. Do I have a second? I'll second. Mr. Rochelle, any further discussion? If not, I'll hold the board. Mr. Rochelle? Yes. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Whitworth? Yes. Vote is in the affirmative. Thank you. Welcome. All right. My well, next one is number three Depot Street upgrades. Can you see if Mr. Um, Roberts is on the phone for us? Yes, sir. Hi, Ken. Be right with you. Yes, sir. I met with Mr. Roberts and Mr. Rochelle and myself did tonight. We were trying to get it arranged so we could have an open meeting earlier last week, but I will call that I got busy at the store and was not able to call Mary by Wednesday to get this set up. At your table, and, I, and made copies of Mr. Roberts gave to me from the line design technician, Hampshire Electric Co-op. Down on Depot Street, I'm not asking for your approval tonight, because I know you're just seeing this tonight, but I would like to have you look at it, even if three of you can go down and meet with Mr. Roberts at a time, individually, to show you definitely what they want to do. If the electric company wants to come in and take out two poles that run down the railroad bed that way we have a path that serves two houses. They want to upgrade the lines, remove two poles, put one pole in on within the town right away, which they'll seek our permission. At that point, Mr. Roberts would like to straighten that road that goes into the Fiori property and fix that box culvert that basically had, he told us about early in the year that was, was failing. And it has been failing for a while and been on the radar for a while. When there's heavy rains and it comes across, the culvert is below, already below water level, so it can't exhaust it out until it has enough pressure to blow it out. The Pattersons, who live next door, gets their cellars flooded out because the water hydraulic pressure comes up to the cellars level with it. And he would like to straighten out that curve that goes in there to make it a little straighter on the depot street. Uh, well, let me, let me tell you. 
And I, this picture really doesn't give us justice to what has to be done. That's why I said the three you might just go see them individually. The cost of this project, Mr. Roberts will tell you in a minute. He has the gravel. They like to get down about 30 inches, put a good base in. They'll run a culvert that goes along the stone wall of the Patterson property, which is the town's property, not the Patterson's. Now get into the existing pipe that the highway department did years ago when they redid Depot Street. The cost involved here would be the man hours being put in the gravel that would have to be put down, paving, roadway going in, and a few trees taken. Co-op has taken down most of it. So at this time, I'll bring in Mr. Roberts, Virgil, and then after that, any questions, I'll let you go. Is that okay? Mr. Roberts, can you add anything I didn't put in there? No, I think you pretty much covered it. I mean, the existing ditch line is is a stone wall, and we've never dug it with a machine. We always hand dug it because we didn't want to undermine it, and it's already starting to collapse, and that can be visually seen. And now it's now it's really on the point of really giving a problem. And we, I've been looking at it at a couple of years now of how to take care of it and when to place it in there. But uh, now because of the wall collapsing, I think it's time we need to do something quickly with it. Kenny, can we go in and just change out the culvert? No, what it is is that's, that old stone wall is actually leaning over and it's starting to collapse into the existing ditch line. The reason I'm saying this is you've got a commercial building that followed, hopefully a commercial site that's coming in for waivers now, don't we? We're down here? No, not yet. Yeah. No, because we denied the access. But they're not on the zoning adjustment, zoning board of adjustments? They were. Is that because we're going to do the road now? No, nope. no. If I this has no idea. This has nothing to do with that project. This is an issue that's ongoing for a while. It's been on the highway department's right. And with the wall collapsing, go down there, Mr. Robinson, get out of the cell. The wall has already collapsed into the dish line. Which is, um, we could go in and fix the stone wall, but it's just going to keep happening because the wall slopes down into that hole. This is one way that we could remedy the situation of the water that comes out of the swamp. Closer. If you've ever noticed behind the TD bank at times, that it rains like the other night, that floods you right out and floods all the way down to Dunkin' Donuts that way. As for 30 years, as for 50 years, is that? But the idea of that box culvert, sorry, the right of way right there, that would alleviate a problem sooner or later, someone going through it. But that project that came before, that would still have to come back to the board. It's like, not why Mr. Roberts wants to so He's looking at it this time, it's because the new poles and everything will be out of the way. This way, now we have to pay for movement of telephone poles or anything else. That's the whole fresh on this road. What's the classification of that road now? That's the high this road. This is the one that shoots out, though. It's part of the spur that shoots out to private property. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. Oh. All the way up to where our company is putting the new coal. So what we're going to fix, and the box that we're fixing, is actually our property, not the main Who plows it main We do. We plow up in there. We plow up to where the town roads, where the, where the town's property stops. Areas push down, one to the right, one to the left. That's where the town plows up to. Right. Road. This is on Depot Street. Right, where the office of police station. Off of Depot. That's what I'm getting. Okay. Yes. So, what kind of road is that? Six. Driveway. It's this is a town road. Mr. Roberts, how would you classify that spur of town road that goes in that driveway in the Twombly Hill well, property? In order for us to maintain it, it has to be a class five roadway. So that's what we've been based it on. The class five roadway. So that's a class five road now. Yes, sir. For us to maintain it to the class five road. 
Question and answer. Mr. Rochelle. Alex Whitman. Mr. McDonald. You folks want to get in touch with Ken this week and go down and look at this project so next week we can discuss this? I would like to go take a look at it. Yeah. Mr. Roberts, um, three selectmen, Mr. Holt, Mr. Whitman, Mr. McDonald, contact you this week and can you bring them down there individually? I know that's a little time consuming, but that's something you could do. Yes, please do. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday would be great. No, it's not far away. We we down. Down. Well, we, we oh. have to post a meeting to have an outdoor meeting next week. Am I correct there, Madam Chairman? I'm Adam Administrator. If you want to meet next Monday night down there at 530 before the meeting starts, we could. But you have to let me know now. And then Mr. Roberts won't have to meet the three individually. Oh. Two of us could meet together with Mr. Roberts. Tell me what the board's pleasure is. Or let me know what the board's pleasure is, not tell me. I'm afraid what you might tell me. I like the, uh, the idea of the full board going down. That's something that can be ex um, done. Okay, Mr. Roberts, we're going to have a we'll start a site visit at 5.30 next Monday night with you down there by the police station. Does that sound good? Yes, sir. Okay. 5.30. 5.30, yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Roberts, we've gotten through that part there. We're going to drop you for a few minutes. We're going to move into old business, go to assessing department website conversion update, and we'll be back to you two items after that. Is that uh, one item after that? Is that okay? Three items. Yes, sir. Town boat, town boat launches will be here. Three items. Second item, I said two items after that. We'll be back. Okay. Okay, Rob on the phone with us. Thank you, Kevin. Rob, I'm here tonight. All right, I am. sir. So Rob is coming back with you folks with the testing department website conversion update. The floor is yours, Rob. Okay, uh, I have presented the uh, spreadsheets to Josh and the uh, base website for that to go on. Um, I'm not sure if it's been posted up yet or not, but it's it's designed and ready to go. All the spreadsheets are set to go and pull the plug on vision. Okay, Josh was sitting there shaking his head no as I look back at yeah, it. Do we have it in book? No, sir. No. No, this so that's just the, the next step is to post up. Okay, so before you go live, would it be possible for the Board of Selectmen to see that on the website before we go live and make sure everybody's satisfied with it? Uh, that would be a Josh question. Josh question. That's a Josh answer, yes. When do you think that could happen, Josh? So Josh is saying about a week and a half for us. Is that a good timetable for you, Rob, before we get back to sounds, it? Sounds perfect. Anything else we should know about this when we bring it up? Uh, nope, just that we anticipate having the Avatar uh, website online about, I'm, I'm looking at September 1st or earlier of 2021. Okay, so about a year, three months out then, eh? That's about right, yep. All right, gentlemen, do you have any questions for Rob? No. Okay, so as soon as we hear from Josh that we got it up and running so we can see and have a test run on it, uh, we'll get back to you and tell you it's a game. It's a, it's a go ahead. Does that sound fair? Sounds perfect. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thanks you for spending it. your time with us. I think you'll be back in a little bit. Anyway. Yep, I'll be back later. I'll be waiting on online here. Okay, sir. Thank you. Next Thank one you. is going to be number two, Town Boat Launch. We can bring Mr. Roberts back up for this, Josh. Thank you, Ken, for sticking in there with us. Yes, sir. Uh, gentlemen, in your books, as you saw, you have a breakdown of what it will cost, cost for boat launch to repair and upgrade. 
folks have any questions for Mr. Roberts. I know Mr. Rochelle who gave Mr. Roberts the pictures, a lot of pictures. He did not have copies. So they will become part of a book if we go for the wetlands. Um, but you see there's a fee schedule right there. I thought I thought we only needed the three slabs. That's what I was just gonna ask him. Can I? I thought we that would be three slabs. Well, that would be determined by you. If you look at Shay's, Shay's thing, they just opened it all up. But you look at where it says four slabs on the second part, it says large, 30 inches wide by 18 feet by six inches thick. That'd be the question. You're going out 30 inches in a, in a slab. How far does the Board of Selectmen want to go out beyond what it is today? So you can actually see the... We had talked about going out three slabs, yeah. So if it's only three slabs, it's eight hundred dollars each. So you're you're only talking. That's that's be the change, the money change. You, so you're talking uh, about twenty four instead of thirty four. I think that would be enough. Yeah, because they're backing over that lip now. That's with the thirty foot trailers. Were you able to look the pictures at all? Yes, I did. Would you, were you able to? Make head to tail got it the way they came yeah up. pretty much and I think uh, I think uh, Stony Ridge will make you know that's who I'll give them to in the morning uh, with agreement with the board if you want to proceed with the wetlands permitting. All right, gentlemen, the thing you have to think about here one is where's the money going to come from? Farming. Pull that magic out of it. she's got all the money. Secondly. The fishing game rent is still going to be down for another year. Once the fencing starts going up, I believe, by six of it, yes. that will be closed off. So there's going to be, there's going to be any more increased boat traffic, but the boat traffic is going to be steady for at least another year or two. Um, so the main thing is we have to look at what find out, and more, I guess, at this point, we yep. find out where they would like to pull the money out of that. Out. Can you get the excavator in there and reach out? As long as the turntable don't go in the water, as long as you're not up in that turntable. That would be a question mark for DES, whether or not I could walk in the in the water with them. Not that I can't pick them up, it's whether or not they'll allow me in the water right. with the excavator. All right, could you possibly get a case scenario of what it would cost to have that installed? I can. I can talk to Winnipesaukee Marine and ask him what it would cost to bring the barge down to set three slabs stone. And I, you know, and they they inform me. I talked to them a little bit about it. They also inform me they don't have a diver, so we'd have to get somebody in the water to level it out. Okay. All right. So if you could find that out for us, that would be great. Maybe do a week and a half, uh, two weeks, maybe. Yeah, it would be pretty quick. You know, the the two costs that is in here just it was just a relative thing, and I know that Bob likes all see all the costs. The three inch stone I have it's in the pit. I also have the three quarter inch stone in the pit. So I mean, we have that existing today. I mean, that's just minor what's there. So those two are not actual physical costs. We've already got that stuff in the pit. So, and then maybe that will give the town administrator time and more time to figure out where we can come up with this part of the cost and possibly look at where they can come up with some more extra money. Right. So, we're looking at suitable. concrete slabs at 2400 now. Three. Yes. 
At least that seems like the consensus of the board. Yeah. And there, there are some boulders down here that they have to be removed, or unless the the stone comes up high enough over it that that the concrete uh, uh, on it. There was some. You'll see them in the pictures. They weren't giant, but the size of them might have to get pulled out. Anything else you'd like to add, Mr. Roberts? No, sir. Okay. And gentlemen, any other questions for Mr. Roberts? All right, so he'll go back and try to get us some cost estimates for installed installation while Laura and the town administrator look for where the funds could come out. But it is something we're going to do, have to do because the traffic is going to stay the same for another year. All right, gentlemen, moving on the highway department. Liberty International Trade In Value. We still have Mr. Roberts on the phone. He has recommendations in there what Liberty is willing to give us for 10 wheel dump truck ads. Value includes the plow. His recommendation he feels that it is a little too low. His recommendations a piece of the truck and equipment. He's looking for board approval on this. Unless you have some questions, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Holt. Yes, uh, how would you piece it out to sell? Well, I think uh, the thing is, is we're, we're not positive exactly, other than we know we're going to spend the main bearing in it. And we're actually talking to a mechanic that we know is whether or not that he would buy the truck, hopefully for about $10,000. That's a lot more than what Liberty's allowing for it. And I guess he's investigating that. The other thing is the sander, we've inspected it, gone back and forth through it. It's a flink. It's not exactly the top of the line of what we, we usually run, but we still have it. That could be utilized for the next 10-wheeler. Um, the only thing that usually goes in a stainless steel sander is either the screen in the top or the stainless steel floor. Even if a stainless steel floor had to be repaired, it's about $3,000. So can we, can we get away with utilizing that sander? That could drop the cost of the equipment almost 20,000. So I'd be saving 20,000 there. And as far as the plows go, we'd we'd part we'd we'd sell them out. Just what they are, separate. Or we'd keep them on hand as spares. Anything else, Mr. Holt? You mentioned uh, you thought you had a buy up of the 10 wheel truck as it is. Possibility, yes. Uh, how would that work? Would you go out to bid still to sell that truck? Still have to be a sealed bid. Okay. According to town policies. Okay. Uh, well, you, the fire chief is presently doing that with his fire truck, going with a uh, auction. Have you talked to him at all about that? No, I haven't, but... Uh, uh, Pat O'Brien has, we've discussed it a little bit. So there is an option there as well. Uh, I just, I just feel this. Our conversations with the uh, chief, uh, fire chief, was very good. I thought that was a good idea. It's kind of a new concept. But I, I think that's worth, worth looking into also. Right. I mean, I know all this money goes back to the general fund, but I was kind of upset to see the numbers that were given to us by Liberty International for a trade-in. I just feel that the town, the taxpayers will get a lot more money, even if I take this thing down piece by piece and sell the doors and the, the load cover and all that piece by piece off of it. I'll, I'll make more money for the town that way than letting them give me $4,000 for that truck. Right. Yeah, agree. Yeah, I just, I just, it's like giving it away. I just can't do it. I, not in good conscience, couldn't do it. Thank you. Mr. Rochelle, any questions? No. Mr. Whitman? No. Mr. McDonald? No. It's one more thing done. So, gentlemen, what's your pleasure? Allow Mr. Roberts to put it out to sell it to Steel Bend. Yes. Now, do you want him to go through what the fire chief did to on his? Well, I think he should look into all of it. Into it, they send it out, seal bid or auction. All right. Motion, which direction you want Mr. Roberts to go into?
I'd like to see him do them all. I make a motion that he does them all to see where he can make the most buck for the people. Go with that, whatever that may be. Go with it. Yes. A second that. Because Kenny's pretty good at making sure he gets Big takes bang. care of it. The motion was made by Mr. McDonald to allow Mr. Robinson to put out contract for sale and look at all three possible categories, steel bid, the municipal one that the fire chief two hour or piecemeal it out. Yep. Seconded by Mr. Whitman. Any further discussion? I'll pull the board, Mr. Rochelle. Yes. Mr. Whitman. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Wentworth. Yes. Both in the affirmative. Kenny, stay right on the line with us because we're moving. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, sir. Uh, just uh, I mentioned it, but I didn't hear it in the motion. Am I going to be allowed to keep the flink sander and utilize it for the next 10-wheeler coming in? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. And so that only included the truck. It really didn't include the plow or the sander. That's why I took the motion. Yeah, and if we can, I think if we can use what we need off it, then we should be doing that anyways. Okay. Yes, if sir. If you want to get rid of the plow later on, you just have to come back before us. Yes, sir. Thank you. Number four, highway department line painting and crack ceiling. As you notice, um, your tag there is also the date, possibly by first, whether you may or you have kind of 48 hour notice prior to beginning work. Also, Connecticut seal coating is scheduled in crack ceiling. If you get too late August weather permitting, they will confirm. The only thing, gentlemen, I guess what I would like is any crosswalks that cross a certain area. And I'm sure Mr. Roberts is going to go down and lay out the one in front of the village store. That, and where a crosswalk covers such a direct, a long area like that, there's really no defined sidewalk. At least no painting goes in those sidewalks. No parking, excuse me. I agree. Because we can put a crosswalk there, but everyone's still going to. I, I don't know if that's something that can be done, Ken, or not. Yeah, it's just be an added cost. Anything we do with letters will be added cost, so I may over on the line item. Okay. My other question I was going to ask you, it seems to be where the town's right away, like Jenny Douglas Park is, or in front of the insurance company, Twenty line painting the shoot. Do you think we could establish the white line area uh, next to that parking area in front of the insurance company? Um, stagger in what way? Well, you before when when the town redid that entrance right there, they put a yellow line down the center of it. Never yes, put sir. a white line. Never put a white line in there. I guess I was trying to define the property lines of the right of way right there, so we wouldn't the run into the issues of plowing right. or anything again. The property line for the is actually like a foot off the front of the building. Okay. Which is the insurance no building. Problem. We actually problem. own that. Maybe me and you could get together sometime. We could look, me and you could look at it together, and then if nothing can be done, I won't bring it back to the board, but if something could, maybe I can bring it back to the board then. Well, I think we can put the white line there, but you can't put parking in front, I don't think. Oh, well, parking, parking would still have to be in front of that, but right now parking lines come out to a certain point. But if we own the front of that building, the way that corner was coming down the hill, because it should have been, Jenny Park should have been extended in that road, gone down by the eight ball. We shouldn't have Park in front of that building the way they come around that corner. But we do. And it's been that way since but we were kids taken away. I know. But you also, you were kids in this town and pops. But you also could go straight out the end, too. That's, that's another time to, to re I just don't think one. we should be packing lines in front of that building. I don't think we pay parking lines in front of the building. I think the business does themselves. I'm just looking. Right now, there's a big hole between the town road, or what looks to be the town road, and a parking. Mm -hmm. There's questions why the town has none. Well, I don't believe it's on town property. It ain't. So all I'm saying is that we can define the white line off that center line. Now, I'm not saying go through the parking areas, but to find somewhat of a line there. That would help out from people coming down, cutting off the right into a private parking lot. Someone trying to make one turn, and we end up with an accident in there. 
run the white line across here. But maybe I can meet Mr. Robbins, show him when I'm going to be talking. Yeah. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. If I may, uh, that hole you were discussing, I think the the paving crew took it on their own to throw some hot top in it. Okay. Just to let you know. Well, like it, wasn't, it wasn't under direction by us. Okay. No, that was uh, Haley come out and talk to him on it. So okay. they just threw it in a pad. Nice. Okay. Well, maybe I can meet with you during the week. We can look at it together. Sounds good, sir. Mr. Holt. Yeah, I have one question, Kenny. On your line painting, I brought this up to you once before. I believe it was at the uh, budget hearing. Uh, do you have any plans for actual road lines being painted other than uh, crosswalks? Yeah, we do approximately 95,000 feet a year. And we try to do certain places every other year, but we haven't got enough money to do it all. But we do put yellow lines down. We do not put white lines down. We haven't in the past, even though they've been requested. And that's okay, basically a money road, issue. I, yeah, one road I think you might want to look at be Bay Hill. That should, in my opinion, have a yellow line on it. It's very dangerous at night when you go up yes, it sir. with your headlight and determine where the road is. But that's that's either here or there. Any other questions, Mr. Roberts, on this issue? Okay, if not, Ken, I'm going to move on to 4A. Mr. McDonald asked to have the agenda amended. Linwood Drive. Just past Linwood Drive, Kenny. You did a culvert for a driveway and then fixed the driveway up. Yeah, just before that was our that was our water issue that we had that was killing us all winter long. And I thought we didn't do culverts and driveways. Well, we went back to where the town line was, and we cleaned it up because the drainage, we didn't add any culverts. All we did is clean up the drainage and throw some gravel in the middle of it so we could divert it towards the ditch lines. There's no culvert under you that put driveway. A little hat, put a little hat pack down the driveway, didn't you? Yes, I did, to divert the water. During the winter, that was the icing problem that we had. It kept coming out of that driveway, and it runs from the woods in the back and comes down through there. It's not particularly from the house. It comes through the woods and runs down the middle of the driveway and out. But I thought we didn't do driveway culverts because there's all no, the culverts and the driveways are in the town right away. There's no driveway culvert under that road, that driveway. All right. Okay. The one... To the, if you're driving up it, on the other side of it, there's a cross culvert that actually goes across the road. And on the left-hand side, it just goes down. There's actually no driveway culvert at that dirt driveway you're talking about. Yes, Mr. Holt. Uh, I also had a telephone call on that, Kenny. Today, a concerned citizen. Uh, and his concern was uh, it's private property. And we, you went up and reconstructed the driveway. I was out there, I looked at it. Uh, you went up approximately, I didn't measure it, Kenny, 40, 50 feet. You uh, redid no. it both sides and you re graveled it. Uh, and his concerns were if we're going to start doing this on our road reconstruction jobs, it could get uh, repetitive. Okay, before we go much further, Bob, uh, I just want to explain this. During the winter time, we were called up every day for an icing problem on Stockbridge Corner Road. So I sent a truck and a man up every day to sand that section of road because of the water that came out of that driveway. So in doing so, the money I spent was phenomenal to send someone up there every day. So in my analysis of the whole thing, for what little I did there to correct the water problem, and change the road pitch to keep the water in the roadway. It's a safety issue for one, and it's a it's a money issue for another of sending a truck up there every day during the winter. Now we're going to have to go back in on private property and fix it again, or is it done? No, it, don't have to go back. it's actually the stone wall is the town property. It didn't go beyond the stone wall. 
we own an enormous piece down through there. But and again, he took yes. it up as far as the stone wall and made sure there was a ditch on both sides. And we raised the center of the driveway high enough to make the water go right or left and not down the middle of the driveway and on to Stockbridge Corner Road. So there's no doubt, Kenny, in my opinion, that what you did is going to cure the problem. But it's just the issue of private property doing work on it. But it wasn't private property. It's not town property. property. It's not right town right. property goes all the way to the stone wall, and that's where they stopped. They stopped at the town right. wall, the stone wall, he said. So what the work you oh, did? Yeah. Okay, I can't testify. No. I didn't see. It. Okay, Mr. Roberts, thank you for justifying that and clarifying the issues thank on you. that. McDonald, any yes, other sir. concerns? Nope. Nope. All right. So thank next, you. we're going to move to number five, Mr. Roberts, called the Rumble Strip update. And we back if you have a light from Mr. Roberts after talking to the project engineer out there. They decided to do opening on their Rumble Strips and businesses. Mr. Roberts, go ahead. So we're talking to Mike Deuce, who was the engineer. He's the one that actually sent me the draft on rumble strips. And they were in the middle of the draft stages. It was very fortunate that the Board of Selectmen thought it was good to get in the middle of this. So I did a lot of measurements, sent them a letter uh, over a bunch of calculations. And I came up with before, and I'm going to say aprons, it's basically the fate the paved flare sections on both sides of a roadway or business to go back 50 feet, either oncoming or outgoing, and make sure there's no rumble strips within the 50 feet. From what I understand from Mike, he was telling me they're going to adopt it. They're looking at adopting it for the state of New Hampshire, that 50-foot radius. That's going to make a big difference. It is going to make a big difference. That's something we, we talked about yeah. before. Yeah. That's going to make a big difference. I hope right. Will. So... And, and to think that a vehicle at 50 miles an hour travels about 78 feet a second. So I did a lot of calculations and sent them everything, and they seem to agree with it. Good. Oh, how does that work at uh, a road intersection? All road intersections, all businesses. And there's only two big businesses there that has a lot of travel. So it'd be like... On all the road intersections, it'll be the 50 foot either way. Yeah, from the end of apron. So it's the width of the road plus the flared end section is the apron. So 50 feet back from the end of that apron is where they're supposed to stop or start. Good. So actually, there'll be a space. Any other questions, Mr. Robinson, on the rumble strip? Okay, Mr. Roberts, thank you very much for hanging in yes, there sir. with us tonight and also justifying certain things that need to be done. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you want to stay on this one too, Brian. Fine. We got you up here. We might as well just keep hitting the match. <laughs> All right. Donald, you had the question on the Harmony Park, on the expenditures for the. Out of the no. Yes. Laura went back in and looked at it. So if she has your explanation there for you. Any questions for the town administrator or would you like me to explain this, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Yeah, what this is is remember we did the when we did the change order to put the fabric and the riprap in front of the wall that went outside of the radius of the permit we had previously. So we had to do a change in the permit. So before anything was laid, we did a verbal with the Wetlands Bureau, and this is just the bill for the formal that we do have a a wetlands permit to go within that radius. Why so many prints? Well, what do you mean by so many prints? You got 32 prints here. You got eight oversized print plans, and you got 24 of the eight by 11s.
That's Paid out by 11 color copies. I don't know. That, I, I assume that's what the DES requires. I have no idea. And they're twenty two dollars and fifty cents a piece. And this is this is um, above and beyond that twenty four thousand we got left, or is that coming out of the twenty four thousand? It comes out of that. Okay. Whatever was left. Yep. Okay. And again, it was just a change question? order. It's just like the GMI change order. This was the wetlands from right. the, for that change order. All right, Mr. Holt. Damn it! Man. I have no problem this issue uh, you know it's got to be done it's a lot of money we're spending a lot of money out here uh, I at one time I asked for a uh, cost analysis of this project to date and I, I received one uh, I had some problems with it if you remember uh, I still have some problems with it and here's another problem another add-on and uh, I I don't think we know how much money we have left to expend. Well, I think Laura can tell you that. Yeah. Well, I can show you the paperwork I have from you, and it was 20. Does this have to do with this specific issue, though, Bob, that we're discussing tonight, this one? Well, yeah, it, it, it's permits. Well, yes and no, but I mean this one here defined on the on the on the rock out in front of everything. So I'm just wondering oh, if you if you don't agree with Laura's number, maybe the two of you need to sit down and see where you don't agree, then bring it back to the board of selectmen and stuff because you're giving us numbers that the four of us have, don't know what you're talking about. So it'd be kind of unfair for us to sit here. And well, uh, well, what uh, what I'm asking for is I think the board left some money on this project. Well, I'm and, sorry. Yep. If you want that, if you want that as a gender item, that's fine. But if you don't agree with Laura's numbers, maybe the two. I'm not saying I don't agree with her numbers. I just want to see what we have left, well, you what we've expended, and what we have left. But what you just said was she gave you numbers, but your numbers weren't agreeing with her numbers. I thought that's what I heard. That's kind of what I sound like. Well, yeah, because she. Okay. But, May I speak real quick? Because I know where you're going. So he wants just the two warrant articles that were approved for this project, nothing that was in the capital reserve prior to. I'm doing the entire capital reserve account, okay. what you have in there. That's what you mean, right? You just mean the approved for the Harmony Park project fund. No, no. With all the expenditures. Right? Because you're, cause, yes. Yes. Well, no, because we've taken money from different accounts. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Not just the two warrant articles. See, this gets confusing. Mm -hmm. And when I when I originally asked for it, I got the I got the figures, but in it Stony Ridge's permit wasn't in it. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because that was done in two o two seventeen, I believe. Uh, and we had twenty four thousand left. Now, Stony Ridge's permit was four thousand something. So. I don't, I don't know how much money we have left. And I, I don't think, I don't think anybody here does either. I believe I updated all of that for you. I can get, get you that again. And then maybe sit down with Laura, mm -hmm. go over those figures, see if they're satisfied. If not, bring it back to board. We'll get all that same paperwork you've got, so we can right. look at it because we've got the paperwork. But yes, it has been kind of confusing because a little bit comes in here, a little bit comes in there. I think one was paid out of one account that shouldn't have been. Right. There's nothing we can do to re rectify that. Right. Right. So, but I'd like to I, I, just the way you kind of said it that your numbers didn't agree with hers. So I want to find out why they didn't agree with hers because I didn't agree with hers one time. And she forgot to carry something over, yeah. and we both came to the same conclusion. It can go either way. Well, it's, it's not so much I don't agree with her figures. It's I, I do not know how much money is left. How much money is left? Oh, I don't know right now. I'd have to go look at it. Look at it. Oh, oh, okay. but, anyway. but but you have that page yeah. back together. Okay. I think I think if but if the two of us can mark that out, yeah. that's fine. If not, then bring it back to force and be better. Sound good to everybody? Yeah. Okay, great. So we'll move on from that. I guess Mr. Roberts, you don't need to stay on the phone any longer. Um, 
We're going to move on to Soikman's report. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you. Have a great night. I have one question. Oh, Ken, I'm going to have you hold on. Mr. Holt has a question. I need to like his report. Mr. Holt, I'll start with you then. Yes, uh, reference this project. I, I, would just, I, I want a time frame of when GMI is going to be able to come in and go to work. And I've been told that uh, they're busy, they're scheduled, and blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm really not interested in their problem. My problem is getting that project finished. I want, by next week, I think this board should have a definite answer when they're going to be. Okay, you want Mr. Roberts to do that? He wants the town administrator to call GMI and ask them. Mr. Roberts has. Whoever's handling the project. The only thing I'm going to say in defense of a contract, start it off, is if you put me on a cease and desist, my party plans to come back first time in the spring, you put me on a cease and desist, I'm not going to sit around and do my thoughts away. Please be in the list. Again, right? They already had their pay They had a time frame. They were going to do that. We didn't wait. Right? So they're not going to all of a sudden drop their hot top projects just to come back and put our shy job when we put them on a cease and desist. I don't, as a contractor, I would. I would sit to say, guys, I had your open window. You made me stop. So it. now I went out and got my other work going. Now I told these people I'd be here. You want me to tell these people to be here? You guys made a decision four months ago, three months ago. I think we can ask Mr. Roberts or Liz to call them up and say, we need to get a better this time for the summer. As far as demanding it, uh, we might be able to, I think that's pushing. I don't, what do you think, Mr. Roberts? I, I can call Jeff and discuss it with him and see if there's any open window. He did have an open window. He's going to try to get us in. They actually moved a loader in and they had problems on a job and they, it, it took that window away. So he's trying to find another window for us. The last I talked to him. And that's understandable. I mean, it's yeah. Yeah, your equipment's got to be out schedule and it's moving, or you make, or you're losing money. Oh, or anything else? Uh, I'm not happy with that answer. Yeah. Well, it is. I have to agree with him, and it is our fault because we put the cease and desist on it, and it, it put a monkey wrench in his schedule. And it's been difficult to ask. Then we decided we wanted him to come back. And he can't be expected to drop everything he's doing and then just come in for us. So uh, kind of like it's kind of our fault in a way. Wait a minute. Um, well, nothing else for you, Mr. Holt. I'm sorry. You have the floor as far as you report. Anything else you want to report on? Okay. Mr. Rochelle. Nothing at this time. Mr. Whitman? Yeah. The uh, old Home Week Committee finally had a chance to meet. On the uh, 25th, we all brought our comfy chairs and sat in the parking lot at the senior center. And we talked about uh, having an old home day on August 16th, which was the originally scheduled day for the uh, car show. And the idea, the ideas we tossed around, I presented today to the emergency team. I particularly want to hear what the chief had to, to say about it. Some of these suggestions included a small carnival that more or less sort of got shot down today. Uh, but the idea would be to have the car show. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to bring this up with live music and also um, food trailers around the town area rather than having a picnic or a barbecue or something like that. Um, for one thing, you would be able to help with a barbecue situation this year, like they have in the past. So we figured food trucks around the area, um, social distancing, distancing is much more possible. You don't have a lot of people congregating in one area eating. They're walking around, you know, like getting a sausage sandwich here, a fried dough over there. Can I ask you something though? Yes. Have you asked like the fire department if they want to do a fundraiser? Uh, the, fire, the fire department was, approached by one of our members who's in the fire department 
uh, whether they wanted to do their chicken barbecue that day. Yeah, even sausage pat any. Yeah, um, good money maker. Ruben, you were at the meeting today. I don't know that the chief gave as much of an answer. He kind of did. He basically said that at this time they were not pressing the chicken barbecue or because the manpower is shifting and staffing availability. Yes. Yeah. So yes, they had already concluded that they were not going to do the chicken barbecue. And along with this issue here, he just did not see anything coming up. So we, we have an old home day. The car show would go on. It's in the center of town. Uh, the food trucks are placed here and there. So it's everything's within walking distance to people who are there. And uh, that's where we are right now. But since our meeting uh, this afternoon, I have not spoken to the chairman, you know, Roger Sample. And I haven't spoke to the secretary yet, so I have to tell them what transpired at our meeting today and see where it's going from there. Mr. McDonald, anything else, Bill? No. Mr. McDonald? No, I mean, for a couple more weeks. Okay. So the emergency management meeting was discussed to open up town hall Wednesday, July 1st at 8 a.m. It will be, hopefully after tonight, there will be a door to bring Elaborating more on that. Um, a little bit with us later on. We did talk about moving forward. Um, the consensus of the emergency management team was, and I put in my senses up there, that the people that have come to my store, they said, when it does open, we have to be prepared that we're only allowing so many in the town hall, keeping social distancing. We're coming in the July with tax bill to do. <clears throat> this had reported at the meeting too. First of the month, end of the month, is always seems to be busy because of registration. The one that wait till the last minute, the ones that want to get it done first of the month. Tax bills to do, so you're going to have a little more foot traffic. So things will be monitored, and Mr. Devers will be in the building at times to make sure everything goes through for the greeter. Because it's going to put that individual sometimes in a possible situation that can only go so far, and then when the Taxpayer or resident doesn't understand the full amount of the situation that that individual might have to call and ask someone to come up and explain it a little bit better. We've done it in the past. Um, I did bring to the emergency management a lot of folks out there, I'm not saying the majority, but a lot of folks have come to me with concerns about it not being open, by not having a meeting. And I would, nothing more, I would love to have than everything wide open. But I also look at the Midwest, the West Coast now, Arizona, Texas. Now, they never got hit with the pandemic like we did in the East Coast. Originally, nor did we ever get hit hard in New Hampshire. <coughs> but I nor do I want it to get hit hard. Central New Hampshire didn't get hit hard. Southern New Hampshire get hit hard. Southern New Hampshire. I'll tell you we didn't. But I don't want to see a second round come around that. We've just seen that in New Jersey. They're all ready to open up the door, open up for businesses, and the governor shut it all down today. Those poor business owners down there don't have a chance, a lot of them. And we've seen that on the news, we've seen that on the interviews. So if we have to take a little more precaution on having full town meetings yet, I'll be patient. Do we have the glass up downstairs? The glass is up downstairs in the town collect tax collector's, tax collector's office. Well, there will be one that will be in temporarily installed at the library, one at the water department. This Roche show installed them last week, town clerk's office. We're not putting anything on the Building inspector, building inspector in the town plan, and we'll have one on theirs. <coughs> and I think we made up five, was it last week? Three. Three. Yeah. It was told me that they didn't need them at that, in that section uh, for the planning department at that time. We made up more. Second floor will be off limits um, to all residents and taxpayers. There's no need. Also, elected like town officials, when they come in, at least let the young lady or the young man downstairs know that you are the elected official. But you are requested to come up, I believe, through the back stairs, not through the main stairs, and do not sit and socialize with all the employees. All elected officials, not just <coughs> not saying selectly. You have a duty that you have to do, but when the trustees come in, they don't need to go to every department and sit and chat with them. <coughs> Nor does the conservation department or anything like that. So we're still trying to keep some up. Mm -hmm. Moving on from that, they were moving on. The uh, I know the West Side restrooms had been being worked on. I don't know if it was done or they this afternoon. <clears throat> but overall, it was a good meeting. 
concerns were brought up about some faith businesses in the Bay, about how the lines extend out to the crosswalk and people get confused while they're crossing. The chief was addressing those issues. Um, I'm trying to remember everything that was on the, the lines. I mean, we have lines coming out of the bank in the middle of traffic that we yelled at Dunkin' Donuts about. And it's all through Main Street now. It is with the banks and stuff. <clears throat> but I want to let everybody know that it is opening up July 1st at 8 a.m. If you want to come down and meet the door greeter, come on down. We haven't hired a door greeter, so it's the secretary's, right? Right now, we have not hired a door greeter. Your yeah, so those are right. we have now. And we have secretaries down there that can take shifts. Yes. So we will be moving on to that afterwards. That is the end of my report. I will turn the floor now over to the town administrator for the TA. Before I get myself in trouble, she does me a little awesome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on your TA report, the first item I have has to do with the assessing department and three, um, three abatement requests, which you have um, some information at your seat. And on the phone is the town assessor. He is working uh, for this meeting remotely downstairs, and he can explain to you the three abatements and what the issues are. Thank you. No, I'll just find them. <laughs> Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, what you have there is three abatement recommendations for denial. Uh, of course, if you uh, look at the assessments on them, you'll see they're three of the highest valued properties in the town. <clears throat> I've done a, an extensive amount of research on the uh, concept of super adequacy. I'm not gonna go in at length, but suffice to say, the replacement cost on all of those properties far, as ex far exceeds its value. But in the end, what I was able to do was essentially place the properties in a range. They're very difficult to appraise because there's, there's no such thing as a comp for a 38,000 square foot house. It just, it doesn't exist. It's very difficult to do a sales comparison analysis. On Rob, that. Rob, can I interrupt, yep. interrupt you? For, for Absolutely. He's not going to find yeah, it because yeah, I waste my because I didn't. You you don't have the individual properties. You only have the tax map and lot. Okay. So mean nothing to me. Right. So well, I'm going to pass out the three that you are talking about. Okay. Yep. So so they can look at it because they're the originals. Yeah. All right. Because mm -hmm. we normally we have who they are, where they're located at, not just the tax map, right. lot numbers. So yep. I'm going to okay. Pass them down. Okay. So that way they have to have a question. So just give us a couple of minutes. Yep. These are three very large properties of mm -hmm. So they are very unique to which is why he's here speaking with you. They're the same owner? No. Oh, different. One of them, though, we had just debated uh, maybe a year or a year and a half ago. We came to an agreement. Yeah. And then, the, on the from the previous sheet, owners. On the cover yeah. sheet of each we packet, had, gives the brief yeah. synopsis of the property. And then if you want to look a little further, pages. So Rob, to give the board a little more time, I'm going to ask for a five minute recess. A ten, five to 10 minute recess on this, I'm sorry. Would it because be more that, helpful guys if I came upstairs? No, sir, because I think someone wants to see it firsthand right in front of their eyes. Okay, but yep, the, perfect. Overall, overall, the recommendation by the assessor, correct me Rob if I'm wrong, but the, the recommendation yep. is to deny. deny the three abatements. That's the decision you need to make tonight and then Whatever happened to happen after that. I think if you put it just on a regular consent agenda, it would have been a better option. To deny, to deny the abatement request. I think it would have been better, but it, I understand Rob bringing it to us this way because of the amount 
of assessment values that are involved. The magnitudes, and I do anticipate that all three of those property owners will appeal at either Superior Court or Board of Tax and Land Appeals. So I, I just really wanted the board to be aware <clears throat> and to have my input and my ability to answer any questions that you may have. Well, the last time. Wait, wait a minute. Mr. Holt had his hand up first. Mr. Holt? Yeah, I, uh, I, I read through your presentation here. My uh, concern is you feel that you can justify not approving these abatements. Mm -hmm. uh, what if it, if you have to go to Concord to the BTLA, what does that encompass? Just you? Our town uh, the board of tax and La board of tax and land appeals is just me. Uh, if they challenge, because the the applicant has two appeal avenues, they may apply at either board of tax and land appeal (BTLA) or Belknap County Superior Court, but not both. So if they appeal at Belknap County Superior Court, that would require town council. If they appeal at board of tax and land appeals, that requires just me. Okay, so if they appeal to the court, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't. The the phone once, broke up. Once, Can you say that again? Once a something is petitioned in court, once files are mm -hmm. files are in court, then yes, the attorney is paid. Until things though, everything is underneath the retainer. Now, the last time we went through this, we paid. The special people come in and do the assessment and everything. Correct. That's part lost. of the grounds that I'm using. And we still lost and ended up writing a considerable amount of money back. So How we, sure are you at defending this that, that we're not going to end up losing again? I'm confident that, that the property assessments are proportional and fair. That said... Uh, I, I can't, you know, the, the, the opposition is going to have their own attorneys and their own counter arguments, their own political connections. You can read between the lines on that however you wish, but at the end of the day, it's not a certainty either way. It's my belief that the properties are fair and proportionally assessed, and I don't believe an abatement is warranted. That said, you know, uh, well, the there's, there's no guarantee one way or the other. The reason I'm asking is you keep the one at the 4.7, but the other one you got was at 6.5, you dropped it to 2.3. No, 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 no. That That's two properties. That that would be the second Bear property, the Gary Bear property. It's a 6.8 6 and a 2. Point, combined, the two properties are oh, worth two 8. different properties. Million. That's two. There's that's, two separate, two separate okay. buildings on one piece of property there. Yeah, that's two. That's not a change okay. to the assessment. In fact, I'm I'm recommending uh, denial. So the assessments remain at 9.5 million for the large, uh, map 21 lot five dot dot, dot five, uh, remaining at 8.9 combined for 21.54 and 21.53 and 4.79 for uh, 1838.39.8. And the reason on the grounds on those is that they are fair and in line and proportional with the other assessments of the town. I, I couldn't lower those assessments and look every other taxpayer in the eye and say your assessment is fair. It's just, it's just it's you know their, their assessments exist in the reasonable range of what you could expect those properties to sell for, which is between the range of eight and ten million on the two bigger ones, and between you know four and a half and six million on on the third one. What's your pleasure, gentlemen? I think we got to stand behind the tax assessor. My feeling, I mean, that's what we pay him for is to figure this all out. And mm -hmm. Hope it comes out right this time. Huh. Yeah. Right on top. Well, my 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 read on it, it's already been lowered twice in the last three years, and you know, 
Right. I, I can't. I can't see the. the I mean, the, the value of the properties on a replacement cost exceeds forty million dollars. It's just. It's. It, it, it's unbelievably expensive. Yes, sir. Have they uh, either one of these three? Have they filed yet? No, they won't file until those are all fi those are all abatements. Those were abatements that were filed before I began to work here. That's the end of the abatement work. So they won't file an appeal until they're notified of the denial. They they will have until September first to appeal or not as they see fit. Thank you. Yep. Do I have a motion? Request the map twenty one lot five dash five map twenty one lot five dash four and five dash three map eighteen lot thirty nine dash eight. So move, Mr. Chairman. Approve to deny the abatement request for map twenty one lot five dash five map twenty one lot dash five dash four and five dash three map eighteen lot thirty nine dash eight. Second by Mr. Holt. Any further discussion? All the board, Mr. Whitman. Yes. Mr. Virgil. Yes. Mr. Mr. Holt. Yes. Mr. Wentworth. Yes. Both in the affirmative. Do you want these signed? Yes, please. Yes, please, all of them. The floor is yours again, Liz. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. The next item I wanted to bring up was um, one of the waterworks. Uh, bills that I brought up last week for consideration, yeah, like a compassion waiver due to unusual circumstances. 17 when you have, you have the documents in your binder. I'm going to have one question on this. Uh, I don't have a problem with renting $400. B, abating the $410 fee through the water pump. But if the turnoff charges for 10319 and the turnoff charge for 6419 was not paid last year, that $100 is still owed to the whole problem. Mm -hmm. So I have no problem with waiving the $410. But if the $100 from the turn on and turn off for 19 was not paid, that still needs to be paid. That's my. I'll, I agree with you there. I agree with it. Those are left over from last year. I agree too. I do feel if nobody oh. comes up and turns their water on oh. and uses their water, they should not no. charge. No, the 50 and 50. The 50 and 50 yeah. from last year? Then last three, year and then the they, four They percent. show last year's dates. They don't show this year's dates. So if, if they, they did not pay last year's turn on and turn off charge, mm -hmm. What are you saying? That they should pay. It. They should have. Yeah. So I just need a motion that effect if you're in agreement with my recommendation. If you're not, then I need you folks to make a motion. All right, I'll second your motion. To charge the fifty dollars for the ten thirteen nineteen and fifty dollars for the six four nineteen and rebate the four ten. If the that bill is correct. Yes. Motion made by Mr. McDonald to waive to abate the water charge of $410 for the 2020 season. But the 10 319 and 6419 charge stays in place unless it has been paid. Is that correct? Yes. Right. Second, do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? I'll pull the board, Mr. Rochelle. Yes. Yes. Mr. Whitman. Yes. Mr. Holt. Yes. Mr. Whitman. Yes. Both in the affirmative. Okay. Floor is still yours, ma'am. Thank you. Um, all right. So the last thing for open session that I had a request a few weeks ago from the board, the chairman in particular, in regards to the new employee annual, as far as an estimated time frame as to when a, a draft would be ready for you to look at. And so the the estimate is six to eight weeks out for the first draft. How long? I'm looking at no eight weeks. So that will encompass 
a draft being created with all of the current policies transferred into the, the new template, um, proper tweaks here and there throughout to bring the current policies up to a legal compliance level, because there are some things in the current manual that need to be amended. But we're also going to have the old and the new. And in, in a draft, you will. You will see the old and you will see the new. Yep. She's, um, Laura's working on that. And then in the 68 weeks, that will also include a permit hit meeting to um, show the proposal to the department. As I feel it, we both feel it's only fair that they should see this. This will affect them and their employees, and it's only right that they should see this and weigh in on it, and then once that is well done, six to eight weeks out, it will come before the board. I think we should have a meeting with the town employees over it and get their opinions on the board. Well, that's what she's going to do. Not just ahead, so, because this affects every employee in this town. So we're, we're, ha we're going to have a meeting with the department heads first. That's the first mm -hmm. step, get their input. Um, I already sent out an email. Uh, two or three months ago um, asking for any input yeah, but, from the department. So yeah, but very little. But you're sending out emails to department heads. But the I my feeling is the employees should have a say in these manuals too. They will. And I think for the department heads, they'll have the meeting of the department heads. Department heads will go back to talk to every employee and say this is what the board must like when you found administrator RP said. And two is, if you have any concerns or responses to these, let the board of selectmen know. When the town changed their insurance, mm -hmm. they never once asked town employees about anything. Well, then what the board of selectmen And that's what I'm saying is because the, because the head of the departments were notified, and they never once told the employees. And that's why I'm saying you should notify the employees themselves. I don't care if it's a letter in their check or whatever. <clears throat> look through it and see what their feelings are on it. No. We, we have no intention of changing the insurance. No. But, but it, I, what you're talking about happened years and years and years ago. It wasn't that long ago. Well, it wasn't so years and years. Yeah, just before, before you. Easy, easy. But it, I just think that the employees that work for this town have a right to have their say put into it, whether we change it or not to help them or, so, or not, but yeah. they should have a right to speak up. So that's a few steps down the road. The first step that I talked about, I've just laid out for all of you. Six to eight weeks out. We have to do this a step at a time. Yeah, but you're saying six to eight weeks out, notify the department heads, and then you're bringing it in front of this board to six to eight weeks yeah. for us to look at, not to approve, for us to look at, because I'm not going to approve the first night I see it. I'm going to go home, look at it, make my highlights. I'm just saying, <coughs> we need to have a bring the town employees in or whatever we've got to do. Bring, we can't bring the town employees in because we can't get enough social distancing to do it. Well, then we'll do it down the middle of the Bay parking lot. We'll shut the parking lot down. Well, the chip, the fireman has the responsibility to bring it for what and what we need to do. Yeah. Is take that policy that's been drafted, give it to each one of their employees. They go home, look at that, see if you have any problems, bring it back to me so we can bring it forward. And it's up to the select one to say, hey, did the department head give you something about personal policy? Yes, he did. Well, good. Then we got it. If they don't respond, then it's their own fault. Okay. I don't mind that. that so basically, we're looking at first of September before we can see it. So, yeah. yeah. So that was just, it's a status update. That's right, it's getting worked on. So that's, yeah. we're going, yeah. moving ahead with it. Yeah. Thank that's, you. Anything else, ma'am? No. All right. That's the end for the time. Thank you for not forgetting that. Say what? No, I'm just thanking Liz for not forgetting it. Or, I, you know I what have, I mean? I know you've been working on it and you've been I've busy. I've been working on it and, and it's just, mm -hmm. it's, such a massive project. I've, I've set it aside for like the last year, you know, and then the state it's of the so. happened, and now we have a new, you know, finance HR manager, and she is gold. She's helping. Right. She's cracking she is trying. Oh, well, you're helping. Good job. But she's still smiling, so she ain't throwing you out of the town hall yet. Yeah. 
Just so you know, we're not really, I mean, I'm not changing a lot of the, I'm reorganizing, right. but I'm not going to, like, cut anything unless, you know, exactly you. Exactly what needs to be done. Saying, a lot of the employees are going to really? look at a lot of different opinions, and that's a lot. You'll never to be take able to get any You know what I mean? No, yeah. I just think that really? they all I have a right. we're actually going to take the heat off the selectmen for changing it. I could change it, sure. <laughs> no problem. We would love to, but the request from the board. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, some things like. To, Take the old policy and update it to the new, new policy with the current regulation. Yes, ma'am. Right. That's what we're doing. And any recommendations for anything else? Right, though? No? Okay. All right. Nothing else, gentlemen and ladies. We're going to move on to approval of minutes June 15, 2020, regular session. I make a minute. I make a motion that we approve the June 15, 2020 minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made to approve the June 15, 2020, regular minutes. A second by Mr. Whitman. Any discussion? I'll pull the board. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Rochelle? Yes. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Mr. Wentworth? Yes. Both in the affirmative. June 22nd, 2020, regular. Make a motion to approve the June 22nd minutes. Regular meeting? Yes. A second. Motion to make reverse to approve the June 22nd. Minutes. Seconded by Mr. Holt. Any discussion? I'll pull the board. Mr. Rochelle? Yes. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Wentworth? Yes. Motion to approve the June 22nd, 20, 2020 non public. And we have a recommendation from the town minister. If these minutes are not sealed, and I recommend that they remain not sealed. Do I have a motion to approve the June 22nd, 2020? She is all hired. Yes, she has accepted the offer and given all her right. notice. Yeah. Oh, it's all Very good. good. It's good yep. I make a motion that we approve the June 22nd, 2020 uh, non public session. And leave. And not seal any of it. Second. Leave it open. Motion is made to approve the June 22nd, 2020 non public session minutes and to leave them unsealed. Yeah. Second by Mr. Whitman. I'll pull the board. No discussion. I'll pull the board. Mr. Rochelle? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Mr. Holt? Yes. Affirmative. So at this time, gentlemen, there is no consent agenda. There is no discretionary action for request for appointments. We do have a non-public session, like that motion on non-public session on the RSA 91-8 colon 3, paragraph 2, B and C. Second. So motion been made. Second. I'll pull the board. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Coming Michelle? In. Yes. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Wentworth? Yes. I know. I know. I know. I totally agree. Not, not, not. That's what it would be. You're better off to Why don't we just say we make the voucher, approve non public session, and divulge all information? Yep. Wouldn't that be the same thing? Yep. Okay. And that's Could I call for a seal call? Because I have to use the med room. Can I also call for a five minute recess? Liz, what's the difference if we don't seal it? Five minutes? Yeah, five minutes.
the M and the chief has a uh, recommendation for us to allow him to waive up to. No, we were in public session when we just see it. We're coming out of non-public to not to divulge. Yeah. I'm, I'm not mistaken. But right. you have to yeah. not. You have to do that in public session. Yep. Yeah, that's what happened. He actually did first. Yeah. I just didn't say what time it was. Oh. I apologize. So now we have to go back on. I, I, right? I have She's to look. Yeah. I'll be able to. I've got the time. Chief has a request from the board to Right? Wait. Right off. From 2010. 13 months from today. 13 months from today, which would put us back out. We're at 7 plus 6 would have put us back. July of last year up to 2019 unpaid ambulance fees. March of 2019. Yeah, that's a date right here. Yeah, the end of May 2019. Oh, okay. 2010 to, to, to May 2019. Yep. Second. Motion is made. Second by motion made by Rule one to allow the chief to go back from 2010 up to May 2019 away. All Uncollected fees from the ambulance to the town of Walton, second by Virgil McDonald. Any discussion? Only discussion is going forward. We will take care of these on an annual basis. That's uh, according to the policy to be a monthly basis. Thank you. Yeah. Any other further discussion? I'll pull the board. Ms. Rochelle. Yes. Ms. Yeah. Yes. Ms. McDonald. Yes. Ms. Both in the at this point, I don't believe we have anything else tonight. Chief, thank you for coming in. Folks, thank you for attending our meeting. So the call from adjourned at 824. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to second. Is there any discussion? I'll pull the board, Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Rochelle. Yes. Mr. Holt. Yes. Mr. Whitman. Yes. 